go ahead and, and uh, grab your Bibles. I got two particular scriptures I want to highlight, and then I'll, you know, we'll go through more. But Proverbs 3 and 9, and Ezekiel 48 and 14. Proverbs 3 and 9, and Ezekiel 48 14. Thank you, Lord. I want you guys to get those scriptures. Proverbs 3 and 9. I'm going to do you like uh, our pastor used to do us. Uh, you don't have to impress nobody. If you need to go to the table of contents, go ahead and look it up. He's in there. <laughs> Pastor Greeley says, isn't it? Ezekiel 48 14. It's all right. Proverbs 3. Now I'm going to start with Proverbs. Proverbs 3 9 says, Honor the Lord with thy substance and with thy first fruits of all thine increase. Then Ezekiel 48 14, it says, They shall not sell it. They're talking about the first fruit, and they shall not sell it, sell of it, neither exchange nor alienate the first fruit of the land, for it is holy unto the Lord. You may be seated. Thank you, Lord. I want to give you a date real quick, and as I, I'm going to talk this morning, I'm going to talk about first fruits, but God had me, actually, I got up, it's interesting, because he had me looking at the, uh, the stock market. And so I want to, I want to, I want to, but he, he was speaking to me from this perspective um, spiritually, and so I want to connect all of this for you. Um, sometimes the conversation with God, they're just quite interesting and fascinating. But um, mark this date. You know, every year we do our first fruit offering. So first fruit Sunday is going to be March the 14th. So first fruit Sunday will be March the 14th. And they have the pledge cards uh, for those that you are watching or participating digitally or virtually. We'll have this card available digitally. And uh, we'll get that to you and give, make it accessible to you. But March the 14th, First Fruit Sunday, be praying. But I, I want to talk a little bit about what God was speaking to me as it relates to First Fruit, but what's happening um, in our world. Um, as you guys all know, everybody's familiar with the, um, uh, what happened in the stock market with like GameStop, GameStop and some of these other stocks, right? And it's interesting because there's this huge economic worry. And uh, there's concerns, and I want to read what uh, uh, this article I just took an excerpt from. It says, the actions in the market are really tough to explain right now. Uh, matter of fact, since last March, there's been a 70% increase in the market. Now, I want you to consider that this is happening at the same time that there's a pandemic, yes. and also, um, uh, a lot of loss of jobs, uh, unrest, political and racial, but yet the market has been skyrocketing. Matter of fact, so much so that they said investors are so hungry to invest, they just pouring money into the market without any knowledge of where their dollars will actually go. I read the other day this guy made $35,000 a year. He invested $4,500 in GameStop and overnight he became a multimillionaire. And so um, it's creating all this uh, worry. And the worry is that this market, which is now considered to be a bubble, is going to pop. Uh, it says that when a bubble is actually what happens when the prices of something run much higher than they should rationally. In other words, there's no rationale behind why what happened with GameStop. And some other stocks happen that way. It's no real rationale. Matter of fact, it's, it's scary because this is sort of what began to happen in 1929 before the market crash. But then on the other side of this economic worry, it's a different kind of worry where people are worried about what they're going to eat, where they're going to live. We serve, and I think this is right, Pastor Bev, since uh, uh, we started in April of last year serving. March, we, somewhere around the spring of last year. But we've served in our food drive about 17,000 people. Is that correct? In a year. 
That's just our church. 17,000 people have come through this food line in the past year while the stock market is 70% increase. Something's got to give. Something's getting ready to break. So you have on one end people fearful of being evicted, people uh, not sure what they're going to eat. You ever been, y'all been in a grocery store lately? That then went up 70% too. <laughs> So you got all of this, all of this, and they, said, and they can't figure it out. There's no rationale behind it. It makes no sense. Absolutely no sense. But then I was, I'm in prayer, and I'm praying about first fruit because we do it every year, and, 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 and God is just speaking to me. And he talked, to, and he began to reveal to me that the rationale that really exists is that people want more, right? Like people are dumping money in because they figure I can get it and make it now, then I'm gonna get out. But nobody knows when it's gonna bust, when the bubble's gonna bust, when, when it's gonna actually, and when it busts, the fear is that everything that's up drops. And so if you had money, now it's gone, just like that in an instant. But God says something interesting. He uses the language, I'm gonna call it stock market language in Ezekiel 40, 14. He said, with the first fruit, don't sell it. Or exchange it. God know everything. He, said, he says, don't sell it or exchange it or alienate it. To alienate here actually means to make it pass through or to pass over to something. He said, because it's holy. Yes. It's mine, in other words. The first fruit. Now, the first fruit means the best or, 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 or the top or highest in rank of what you produce. And so the first fruit has to do uh, with what's best. Now, the interesting thing about first fruit, God said this to me, is that we teach people about tithing and we talk about tithing and we know scripture in Malachi that says that with the tithe, God will open up a window of heaven and, and pour out your blessing that you don't have room enough to receive. Yes. But the first fruit is something that you already have. And the blessing of the first fruit, it causes things to remain. I want y'all to hear me. Uh, the tithe is about receiving. The first fruit is about remaining. And he began to speak to me. He says, because the fear in the world right now is that what you have, whether you have a lot or have a little, that it won't remain. So people in the food drive a line are coming through because they're not sure if what they have will remain. People dumping their money into the stock market is trying to hear up and get out because they're not sure how long it's going to remain. And so everybody's grasping and trying to get more because we're uncertain about what's actually going to remain. But here's what the Lord said to me. He says, I want you to tell my church, my people. He says that if you trust me, if you believe me, if you honor me, the Bible says honor me. Uh, with the substance of your first fruit and all of thy increase, because it's three specific things God says is going to happen. Yes. And the first thing he says in Ezekiel 44 and 30, he says, and the fruits and all the first fruits of things and every oblation of, of all and of every sort of oblation shall be the priest and you shall give unto the priest the first fruit of your dough that he may cause a blessing, well, the blessing, to rest in thine house. The word rest means to remain, yeah. to dwell. And he says the, the thing that the first fruit does for us is it causes the blessing to remain. You, it means Kevin was singing, Pastor Kevin was singing about dwelling. It actually means to dwell or abide. That the blessing, and, and, it's, and listen to the language. It says it remains in thine house. I heard people say the first fruit calls a blessing to come upon your house. No, it's in your house. It's in it. It's in it. It's there. It dwells. It abides. It remains. So the first fruit, the whole purpose of it is God has already given it to you. You're not trying to receive anything. He's trying to give it to you. And what he gives you, many of us, everybody here been blessed. But the issue is it ain't remain. Right, right. God has done a lot of things in our lives, but we, I live my life. Listen, I'm speaking from a personal experience. I've lived my life in fear of the things that God has given me wouldn't remain. Is it going to run out? 
care how much money I earn. Is it going to be enough? Can I do this? This fear always trying, and this is what's happening with people on both ends, is that we have no confidence that what we have right now is going to remain. We don't know if our government's going to remain. We don't, we, don't, we don't know what's going to remain. Is our country going to stay the way it is? Is it going to remain? So it's fear. But what God teaches us in Scripture is that if we obey him, if we honor him, he says the blessing will remain in thine house. Now, now, I want you to follow the narrative of this and what he's teaching us. I, I'm learning the more I preach that I'm, I'm hearing and understanding that most people don't believe the Bible. Because when you believe something, you do something. And with for whatever reason you don't believe it, whether it's out of ignorance or fear or bad teaching or whatever, the end result is the same. You don't engage in obedience because you don't believe it. And so God said, I need my church to expect something from me. I need you to expect. I need you to believe that despite what's happening with the stock market, the food drives, the economy, the pending evictions, the loss of all of these things. If you trust me, the blessing will remain. And and listen, I'm going to say this because often what's happening to many of us who've been blessed in the last 12 months, we won't talk about it because we feel ashamed. But I'm telling y'all, our church, I ain't talking about me. I, I, God didn't bless me. I mean, I'm like the old people say, if he don't do nothing else. But, but our church, y'all don't understand. Somebody calls us up out of the blue and says, I, I, I see your church, I like what you do, and they give a substantial, a, they're not a member, a substantial donation. And you know what we do with it? We, we give it all away. Uh, no, all of it, like not keep one penny. All of it, it ain't like, like all of it. Why? And more. Add to it. Why? Because that was a type of first fruit. It ain't ours. It never belonged to us. It was God's. And so what we did with it was we gave it back to the way God wanted us to give it so the blessing would remain. See, we've been, we, we, we've taken things in Scripture and made them do or be something. Listen, the tithe never was intended to bless you that way. So you thought... That if I do this, I know a lot of tithing people who broke. Uh Yeah, I want to talk about that. But what God said to me, if you trust me. Now, I want you to understand what he says about this. He says that if you honor me with the tithe, honor me with the first fruit, right? In Proverbs 3 and 9, of all thine increase, the blessing will remain in your house. Then he says in Proverbs 3 and 10, your barn should be filled with plenty, and that precious shall burst out with new wine. Yeah. Y'all remember when I opened up, I was talking about the stock market bubble. Yeah. And I said it would burst. And that means in the world, loss. In the kingdom, yeah. when the bubble burst, yeah. it means increase. Yeah. See, God's ways are not our ways. Yeah. So he says, if you understand the language of Proverbs 3 and 10, he says, when you honor God with the first fruit, he says, then your barns will be filled with plenty. It means to have abundance, so much abundance that it would call your presses to burst or to break forth or to break through. But then the Holy Ghost spoke this to me. He says, I ain't just talking about money. See, it's some stuff in your life that you already have. And it's in your house, but you ain't broke through yet. See, it's some stuff in your life that you've been praying about and crying about, but it hasn't broke through yet or broke forth yet. God says, if you honor me, if you honor me, he says, I will cause what you have in your house, that which remains to have such increase It's going to break forth, but not to curse you, but to bless you. (laughs) 
God has a system, an economy, a kingdom economy that's different than the world's. See, we take, we, we all excited because we got a new president. He's talking about giving a, another stimulus check and a bigger stimulus check. And what you're going to do is you're going to go eat that. Y'all hear me? Or some of us who think we're a little bit wiser, you're going to go invest that. I'm sowing mine in the kingdom. If they give me anything. I, I'm a, what, God told me, change your thinking. See, we preach this gospel, and we, we do these things, but we don't really believe. If I believed that this is a type of first fruit that God blessed, whether it comes from the government or your, your business or whatever, but it's a first fruit is something that's an increase in your house. If I really believe God, that it would cause the blessing to remain, and that plenty would be in my storehouse, and in, in my wine presses, or that which I'm producing, uh, uh, would burst open, overtake me. I would be. Y'all hear what I'm saying? See, we are operating with this split spirit. The Bible, because of Dasukos. Um, I want to act like I have faith, according to James. Uh, but I'm wavering. And the Bible says, don't let that man think he'll get anything from the Lord. So I try to live and I speak scriptures and I talk scriptures, but it's some of the stuff I don't believe or don't want to do. And so God began to deal with me because I'm fascinated with how this stuff works. I, I like to read about it and, and understand it, but I'm always trying to look at it from a biblical context. And what I found out about God, he'll speak to you in a language which you understand. And so, while we're worrying, while you're troubled about the pandemic and about the economy, there's a kingdom economy that cannot fail. Yes. That there's a kingdom way of living. There, there is a kingdom way by faith to live that cannot and will not fail you. How do I know? Because Psalms 1, 1 through 3 says, blessed is the man. They're walking not in the counsel of the ungodly, seated in the seat of the unrighteous. He says, but they, 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 they delight in the law of the Lord. And they meditate on it day and night. And then he says this about it. He says, they shall be like a tree planted by the river of waters that bring forth what? Fruit in its season. Sleep so shall not wither. Whatsoever he do shall prosper. Anybody believe that? See, it says that, that, that this person is blessed. Why? Because I enjoy, I love, I delight in the law of the Lord. And I meditate on it. And what I do is going to prosper. Why? Because the kingdom economy, God's way of doing things, is not like the world's. God says the first fruit that I gave you is mine. Look, think about this. He gives you something to give back to you to bless everything else you have. He gives you something. He gives it to you. My wife just said, seed to the sower, bread to the eater. He, he gives you something. He gives it to you. You ain't earn it. You ain't do nothing. He, he blesses you with it. It's increase. But it's still his. He said, I'm going to just give you this to give back to me so I can bless what you got. Ain't that a wonderful plan? The stock market is betting on the fact that most of y'all lose. Hear me, hear me. When everybody start winning because of GameStop, they limited how much you could buy. Then they stopped people from being able to sell the stock that they had. That's real. They limited. They said you only could buy this amount. Because they didn't want people who were earning 30, 35,000 a year becoming millionaires overnight like they do. Jeff Bezos earns billions in a day and they ain't never limited him. But this guy, a regular Joe, become a multimillionaire overnight. And they go, nope, nope, 
Not only can you not buy anymore, you can't sell what you have. Y'all better wake up. But in the kingdom, ain't no limit what you can prosper with. In the kingdom, God can open a window for real. That's just one window and part of blessing that you don't have room enough to receive. He can cause you to spring forth and break through and your blessing will remain even in drought. It's important that we understand what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. Because this world will have you at wit's end. While you're serving food, you're looking at your phone to see what the stock's doing. Y'all hear me? You die sucos, you split. Because where our faith is in the wisdom of men, not in the power of God. See, the other thing about first fruit is the rest, the first fruit is evidence of the rest that's coming. But it takes faith to give him back that which was first. Believing that the rest is blessed. That is coming. Watch this. Second Chronicles, you don't have to go there, 31 4. I want to read this. King Hezekiah, they had restored the temple, they were celebrating. And he gives this commandment that the people that lived in Jerusalem and the and, and, and they would give the portion or that which was designated to the Levites and the priests so they might be encouraged in the Lord. So he says, hey, the people had fallen away. They went into sin. They quit doing the things that they had been taught to do. And so they restored the temple and he calls them back and he says, hey, you need to begin to start doing again. Somebody need to hear this. You need to begin to start doing again what the Lord had commanded you. This is not the season, church. Pastor Beverly has said this at the end of 2020. She said, what you sow in this hour, you're going to reap a hundredfold. No matter what, if you sow discord, you're going to reap that. If you sow love, you're going to reap that. What you sow in this hour, you're going to reap a hundredfold. But I'm going to read through this quickly because I'm running out of time. So what happens, he calls them to command them to start giving back to the priests and the Levites the things that they should give. And the Bible says they brought the first fruit, they brought the tithe, or the corn, and they land, they dough, everything. <clears throat> so Hezekiah, he the king, he ain't out there. He, he, he just told them to do it. So he comes back to the priest, and they got heaps, heaps, mounds of stuff that people have brought and blessed them with. And he asked the question. He says, what is all of this? And I want to read this verse, 2 Second, Second Chronicles 31 and 10. And Azariah, the chief priest of the house of Zadok, answered, the answer King Hezekiah said, since the people began to bring the offering into the house of the Lord, we have had enough to eat, no more food lines, and have left plenty excess, for the Lord has blessed his people, and that which is left, that's the leftovers, is this great store. All of, since they start obeying again. Bringing what belongs to you, that which is holy, that which you say. Listen, everything in the Bible is set up to bless us. He says, since y'all start obeying again, since y'all start listening again, he says, this is the, 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 the outcome. And the people have been blessed. I want to say this to y'all, church. God never intended for just the preachers to be blessed. God never set this thing up where everybody in the church struggling and the preachers and pastors are prospering. Something's out of order. It's the same wacky order with the stock market and the food line. It's like the priest or the pastors, the stock market and the, and the members in the food line. That ain't the order of God. See, the order of God is the house is blessed. 
and everybody in the house is blessed. In, in Romans chapter 11, it says, if the first fruit is holy, then the lump is holy. See, 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 it's not this, I, that's, that's the church. What God began to reveal to me is the church is operating just like the world. That you got a few folk where they've seen a 70% increase and everybody else is in the line trying to get something. But when the true blessing of the Lord is in the house. See, the reason we had to give away all the money that was given because the blessing is for the house. It ain't for us. See, the testimony of God is that his people were blessed. When Hezekiah made the commandment, the priests were blessed, and they got what's left over because the people so blessed. It's the people. God's sending us into a community to bless the community, to change situations, to turn things around. He's not coming so you get more. He's coming so God can bless his people. See, you know what the, the greatest day going to be? When the pastor pull up in his fancy car and all the members pull up next to him in the ass. <laughs> Whatever it is. Are your ideal of faith. It ain't about somebody getting something and everybody else admiring what they get, hoping one day they can get theirs. Because the first fruit belongs to God. It's holy. And what's man. and when God trusts you with something that belongs to him, it sanctifies you. Listen, the only reason we got the phone call is because we had already been given. If we had been eaten, you know, the only way, hear me, the only way God can give you increase to the point in which it bursts out is because you are ready. See, your thinking is, I'm going to give when I get more. You got 50 cent. That's what you got. You got $50. That's what you have. You got 500, 5,000, 50. That's what you have. Quit looking at what I have. Because what I get in the first fruit is the same as yours. And only what God is looking at is whether or not you honor him. You ain't trying to honor somebody else. The commandment is that you honor him with your first fruit and the substance of your increase. It's a kingdom economy. It's a different way of thinking. See, listen, for years we've done this, and our church is just wonderful. They just go, oh, man, Pastor Ken Bell said we're doing first fruit offering, y'all get offering. But we didn't really know what it was supposed to do. <laughs> that's what y'all bless. Y'all just like, we're going to obey God. We just, but listen, but that's the beauty of God. You know, be y'all stand up. Is that you can obey God and don't understand something and still receive a blessing. I tell you, we have lived our life, Pastor Best Year Witness. I used to call it accidental blessing. We were like, why are we blessed like this? What happened? We just made a decision in our lives early on that we're going to obey God. I, I don't argue scripture. I don't debate with other people. I just read the Bible. We pray and we believe God. And so what I'm telling you today is that you can change your life. Listen, hear me, hear me. You, if you're watching you can change your life. Many of us have been stuck in situations because when you hear stuff like this, your immediate reaction is to press back. But here's what I understand about first fruit. It's bigger than money. 
God wants you to break through in your life. What if you need a breakthrough in your marriage? What is a breakthrough in your health? What is a breakthrough in your mind? God wants to break through. He wants to give you an overflow. God ain't concerned about dollars. He's concerned about your soul. He's concerned about who you are, how you think, what you feel, what you want. God wants to break through in your house. He wants, Pastor Bev said, he wants to remove the barrenness. There are many people who are successful in their careers but need a breakthrough in their health. They need a breakthrough in their relationship. They need a breakthrough with their children. They need a breakthrough. And God is setting us up to bless us in the midst of chaos. And I'm going to say this and I'll get ready to close. This year has been one of the best years for us. As a church, as a family, in the midst of a pandemic, in the midst of economic downturn, in the midst of chaos and craziness, this year, because God want to prove something. He want to let you know that systems in the world can't hold you. Structures can't stop you. People can't keep you from prospering. What, other, what the Treasury Secretary says don't move me. Who the president is don't matter to me. Who in charge don't stop God? What people think don't keep the Holy Ghost from working. Just like the Holy Ghost woke up and started speaking to me, I thought it was funny. Normally I wake up and the scriptures on my heart. He said, God, I want you to look at this. I didn't even know scripture in the Bible talk about don't sell a first fruit or exchange it. That's stock market language. He starts saying, he said, I need you to understand that this increase that's coming in your house, don't invest that. Because I'm telling y'all, that was my first thought. Because I think about my family in the future. I need to save. I need to invest. We got, I was like, we get this little bit of money. I'm like, God was like, don't do that. Sow it in the kingdom. And watch. Watch the increase be in your house that's going to burst forth. Somebody need to hear me. You've been struggling, you've been crying, and you've been trying to study the economic system. You've been reading and you're trying to learn it. And, and like me, you probably read magazines and, and talking to people and they're telling you how to do this and telling you how to do this. And you got friends that's doing it and look like they're doing well. You in the kingdom. The world's way may work for them, it ain't going to work for you. It ain't going to work for you. They're going to work for you. I got I to let y'all go. I'm on. I want to I wanna pray because I know what I'm saying this morning is challenging people. You just are tired. <laughs> I, I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. This is a faith walk, y'all. This is a faith walk. Y'all didn't see my kids' faces. <laughs> but God is wanting to break forth for you. It's not the money, hear me. It's the obedience. It's the faith. Everything works by faith. God's wanting to break forth for you. You've been praying. You've been believing God. You've been asking God. You've been weeping. You've been crying. And God is saying, I hear you. But I work this way. See, when they tried to bring the Ark of the Covenant to the city of David, and they put it on a cart, and a cart fell over, and the other grabbed it with his hand, and he dropped dead, and David couldn't understand it. But they know what they did with the Ark? David didn't want it no more. So they put it in the house of Obed-Edom. Some of y'all obeyed Edom. And for three months, the Ark of the Covenant was in the house of Obed Edom, and it blessed everything in his house. So when David saw that the Ark wasn't cursed, that it was blessed, he went back and got the Ark. Some of y'all then gave up your blessing. Some of y'all then sent it away because you handled it wrong. You didn't do the right thing with it and you think it was a curse. But God said, go back and get what I gave you. And it's going to bless you and your house. What God has given us is holy. 
and it's his. And if you honor him with it, he will cause the increase in your house. So much so that it will burst forth, break through and break out. Because that's the kingdom economy. That's the God we serve. Let me, let me pray for you. Let me pray. Those that are watching, I want you to hear this morning. I, w- I pray that you would receive this word by faith. Some of y'all that heard this morning getting ready to see a shift in your house. Somebody heard this and they set their heart. Somebody has an expectation that things are getting ready to shift. Look at what you have, not what you're waiting on. Thank you, Lord. Come on, come on. It's a breaking forth. It's a breaking forth. It's a breaking forth. The Lord said it's a breaking forth. My people, they're peculiar, they're holy, they're set apart for me. They're set apart unto me. And if the first fruit is holy, then so is the lump. Father God, I pray for everybody here that don't know you. Some people that's watching need to call. There's a number on the screen, 314-838-6934. Call. Somebody want to walk with you and pray with you. If you don't know Jesus, call. Somebody will pray with you. If you want to be a part of this church, call or go to our website. You can fill out a form. Listen, we want to connect with you. If you're watching and say, I never heard of the first fruit. I don't know what to do. Call. We'll walk you through it. But I'm telling you, it's blessed our church. It's blessed our life. And we didn't even fully understand it. We just was obeying God. So God, Father God, I pray for everybody that's here. I pray for our viewers. I pray for those that's part of our virtual church and virtual family. I pray for those that uh, just aren't able to get out, but you've given us the blessing to broadcast this so they can see it right where they are on their jobs and their homes. God, I thank you, Father God, that you are doing, doing something incredible in our lives, God, that our faith is in the power of God, the miraculous work of God. See, what I'm talking about today is a miraculous work. It's blessing and prosper you outside of an economy, outside of human thinking, outside of a realm where people control what you can and cannot do. But the kingdom of God can't be controlled by man. So, Father God, I pray for everybody here. I thank you, Father God, for first fruits, for giving us clarity and understanding. God, we love you. We honor you. We thank you in Jesus' name. Come on, give God a hand praise. God bless you.